what's going on guys? Nick Heron here with the Fantasy Football Swagger Show and guys today what I have for you is my top 10 list at the running back position. Guys we're talking about standard scoring leagues here so no PPR or anything like that. I will be doing a separate list for points per reception leagues at the running back position and also probably the wide receiver position as well because it does change a little bit but I do want to make sure that we talk about standard scoring leagues because I still think a lot of people are doing those standard scoring leagues. So that's what this list is about. Let's hop right into it, guys. At number 10, we have LaShawn McCoy of the Buffalo Bills. He's brand new there. Used to be on the Philadelphia Eagles, if you don't know. Uh, LaShawn McCoy moved over to the Bills. Had a lot of problems with the coaching staff there in Philadelphia, so obviously they decided to move on from him. They went and got to Marco Murray. But LaShawn McCoy is still a very talented player. I'm just a little bit worried about what's going on there in the Buffalo offense, though. The big thing to me about LaShawn McCoy in this offense is that teams are going to be stacking the box against these guys. Yeah, they do have a couple of decent weapons there at wide receiver, but the opposing teams are going to know that the Bills don't have great quarterbacks. That whole situation there is really, really bad right now, so you have to be a little bit concerned there about LaShawn McCoy's ability to break long runs against a stacked box and a lot of the plays that he's going to be going up against. Uh, the other thing to consider is the fact that the Bills' rushing offense in 2014 really wasn't all that productive. As an entire unit, the Buffalo Bills running backs ran for 1,400 yards on the dot and five touchdowns. 1,400 yards doesn't sound that bad because, you know, we think of 1,400 yards as an individual running back being very good, but teams, even like the biggest of bell cow running back teams are still going to give the ball on occasion to other players. So 1,400 yards actually put the Bills at kind of a low spot. They were in the bottom six at the position for the year, and five touchdown touchdowns is obviously not very good either. So that's why LaShawn McCoy is number 10 on this list. He could exceed that, but we still have to be a little bit careful about him given the fact that that offense just overall isn't very good. At number nine, I've got Matt Forte of the Chicago Bears, who does get a little bit of a, a lowering in his ranking from a standard scoring league uh, standpoint. He would be higher in PPR leagues, but in a standard scoring format, I'm going to still rank him at number nine. I actually think the Bears might run the ball more this year. Obviously, Mark Tressman no longer coaching the team, so I think that the offense is going to become a little bit more traditional with their offense, and uh, it, it's going to lead to, I think, more runs for Matt Forte, probably fewer receptions, which could lower his overall ranking in those PPR formats, like I mentioned, but uh, we'll get into that in the PPR list. From a standard scoring league standpoint, though, I still think Matt Forte is going to be a solid running back. There really isn't any competition for him there in Chicago, which is always nice to see. So as long as their offense isn't terrible, he should still put up decent numbers. Now at number eight, I've got Jeremy Hill. I think Jeremy Hill, personally, I, I believe this guy is going to be a star running back. I think he's going to potentially be a top five player overall next season. Uh, it's all going to come down to how he does along with Giovanni Bernard this year. I still think Giovanni Bernard's going to touch the ball a decent amount, like we talked about before with LaShawn McCoy uh, in that offense. There's still going to be other players that touch the ball for even the Bengals when Jeremy Hill does as well as he's I, as well as well I think he's going to do this year. Uh, one thing that, that I really like about Jeremy Hill is that the Bengals see a lot of success when he touches the ball a good amount. 14, if he touched the ball 14 or more times last year, the Bengals only lost one of those games. So they were very, very productive in the games that, that Jeremy Hill was able to get the ball a good amount at the time. And I believe that he's going to touch the ball a lot this season. I mean, we could be talking 250, 300 touches for Jeremy Hill this year, which would be definitely good enough to make him a solid fantasy running back one. Giovanni Bernard does, I guess, obviously limit his upside just a little bit, given the fact that, like I said, he's going to touch the ball a good amount as well. But the Bengals are going to be a run first team. They're going to run the ball and establish that. And then they're going to try and hit A.J. Green over the top. Uh, and you know other players in that offense as well. But again, it's all going to come down to if Jeremy Hill can run the ball effectively for them. So I think they're going to give him the ball plenty this year. He is one of my lead players that I believe could potentially lead the league in rushing touchdowns this year, and that's always a good thing from a, from a fantasy standpoint. At number seven, I have DeMarco Murray of the Philadelphia Eagles, former Dallas Cowboys running back. Kills me to say that as a Cowboys fan, but it is what it is, man. Uh, DeMarco Murray is going to an offense that is arguably better than what they had in Dallas. But it's kind of interesting because typically that's going to mean that you're going to have a more productive running back. In this case, though, I actually think it's going to be a less productive overall season for DeMarco Murray. Obviously, last year, sixth all-time in total touches for DeMarco Murray. We're talking sixth all-time in the history of the NFL. 
I think that's going to take a big step back in Philadelphia. Philadelphia is going to run more plays overall, which is going to mean that DeMarco Murray is going to get plenty of touches still. But at the same time, they still have two other productive running backs there. They did go out and get Ryan Matthews in the offseason from San Diego. And they've still got Darren Sproles to play a lot of third downs and make a lot of catches out of the backfield. So Murray, although I believe that he is going to be the bell cow running back there, I think he's going to get plenty of touches. I'm not quite for certain that he's going to get the massive NFL leading amount of touches that he did while he was in Dallas. So, again, DeMarco Murray is still a very good running back, great value in the first round. You're going to get a player that's going to be pretty productive, I think, but I don't quite feel as confident with him in the Philadelphia offense as I did when he was with Dallas. So that's why instead of being number one or number two overall like he would have been if he was still with the Cowboys, I think you got to bump him down quite a bit, down to number seven overall at the running back position. Number six. I have C.J. Anderson of the uh, Denver Broncos. Now, C.J. Anderson kind of came on in the second half of last year after Monte Ball and Ronnie Hillman both got injured. Then they went over to C.J. Anderson, and, and a lot of people were really not that excited about it. This guy's kind of really not anything special as far as his uh, what he had shown on tape up till that point. But when he got the opportunity, C.J. Anderson took it and ran. He put up huge numbers. He was one of the top running backs in the second half of the season last year among all running backs. So it's always good to see a player like that get an opportunity for the following season. And that's what I think is going to happen here. Gary Kubiak has called him, and Gary Kubiak, by the way, is the new head coach there in Denver. He is he has actually called CJ Anderson his bell cow running back. And that's not something you that you hear a lot of coaches say. So that's a vote of confidence for CJ Anderson. I believe that he's going to touch the ball a lot this season. Ronnie Hillman and Monte Ball are both ownable in fantasy drafts, but the problem with them is that I, I still don't think they're going to touch the ball consistently, and it could go from one of them to the other one, you know, for the five to seven touches that they might get during a week. It's really not worth touching them. I think CJ Anderson could touch the ball 15 or more times most weeks when you talk about rushes and receptions, and that's always a good thing in a high-powered offense like Denver. Peyton Manning's known for throwing a ton of touchdowns, but honestly, he will check it down, and he will give the ball and a handoff to a running back if he sees the opportunity to do so. A lot of running backs have been very, very successful in Peyton Manning-led offenses, despite the fact that they pass the ball first, second, and a lot of times third down on certain drives. But when it comes down to it, when you get close to the end zone, C.J. Anderson is going to do a great job for you this year. I think he's a very safe player this year, which is, is a little bit surprising given the fact that we thought that about Monte Ball last year and that just didn't turn out. Uh, C.J. Anderson was a lot more productive, though, than Monte Ball was and even more productive than uh, Ronnie Hillman was as well when he was on the field. So I'm, I'm pretty confident in Anderson. I, I would be totally fine with him being a running back one, and that's why I've got him ranked all the way up at sixth. Moving on to number five, I have Jamal Charles here of the Kansas City Chiefs. And uh, Jamal Charles could potentially be higher in a PPR league, but I, I have him at number five here in the standard scoring format. Still an elite running back, definitely tier one running back. Uh, he does have some sorts of injury problems. I mean, the guy has been injured a few times throughout his career, whether it be little nicks here and there or, you know, full-on season-ending injuries as well. But the thing is about Jamal Charles is that when he's on the field, he produces big numbers. If he were in a better overall offense, one that had a better quarterback and, and just moved the ball down the field more efficiently. I think Jamal Charles would potentially be fighting for that number one spot this year, but he is down at number five given the fact that the Chiefs just, their passing game isn't very good and they really just kind of rely on Jamal Charles to drive him down the field, which is a blessing, but it's also, it also hurts him a little bit because he does face a lot of those stacked boxes like we talked about before. So that could be potentially a problem. The other thing about Jamal Charles is that we've seen We've seen that his backups do have some skill. Niall Davis, for example, has, when he's uh, come onto the field, he's produced at an RB1 level himself. So that makes the Chiefs a little bit more willing to sit Jamal Charles when he does have injuries. And a lot of times that can, you know, be the killer for fantasy football. We just don't know, you know, when he's going to be on the field and when he isn't, when he's kind of nicked up. So that makes him my number five running back. Again, still tier one, though. At number four, I do have Marshawn Lynch in a standard scoring league. Uh, Marshawn Lynch is pretty much the model of consistency, dominant, dominant performances. Every year he's been in Seattle, Marshawn Lynch has had over 1,400 total yards and 12 or more touchdowns. And that's every full year that he spent in Seattle. So he's been an elite running back every single year that he's been in Seattle. Uh, he does have some injury concerns of his own, although he hasn't missed much time. He did have some back problems last year, which as you get older, you know, 
does start to creep up on you a little bit more. So we could potentially see a little bit more of Robert Turbin and Kristen Michael, but at the same time, Marshawn Lynch is still certainly the guy who's going to get the vast majority of the of the carries and the receptions out of the backfield as long as he's on the field. So I, I don't really have many concerns about Marshawn Lynch. I think he's one of the safest picks that you can make this year for fantasy football, especially at the running back position. Number three, we've got Eddie Lacy, who kind of almost looks like a mini version of Marshawn Lynch. Uh, he's putting up very similar numbers to Marshawn Lynch. We're talking 1,400 total yards and 11 or more touchdowns in each of his first two years in the NFL. But the difference is that he is in an offense that passes the ball at a ridiculous pace. So it's kind of interesting. Whereas the Seahawks kind of rely a little bit more on the run, it's the Packers that pass the ball a lot. Now, they don't pass the ball the most of any team or anything like that. They're still more balanced than some other teams are. But they get a lot of yardage. They move the ball very, very efficiently down the field. Unlike the Chiefs, like we talked about a couple of, of uh, players ago with Jamal Charles, Eddie Lacy benefits from the fact that the Packers ha are able to move the ball, and that puts them in a lot of scoring situations. They're able to give him the ball at the goal line, and he gets in and gets you those quick six points. you got to love it. Eddie Lacy did a better job as well last year in pass protection, and we expect to see him a little bit more on the field for reception downs as well. So we could see even a little bit more value for him in PPR formats. Again, we'll talk about that in another video. But in standard scoring leagues, I still like him as my number three running back, and he's actually my number three overall player in standard scoring leagues as well. Moving on to number two, I have Adrian Peterson. Now, I know a lot of people, uh, you, you don't really know what to think about Adrian Peterson this year. And to be honest with you, I don't either. But everything that we've heard so far in training camp has been that the guy is back to being the old Adrian Peterson. The cuts are there. The strength is there. The movement's still there. The speed's there. The determination might never have been higher than it is right now. This guy wants to step back onto the field that, and prove that he's still got it. And what's interesting about this whole situation is that maybe with the exception of the one year where Brett Favre kind of tore it up, this might be the best offense that Adrian Peterson has ever played in. I mean, they have decent recept they have decent receivers on the outside. Uh, they've got pretty good uh, players on the offensive line. Phil Lodehold being injured is, is going to be a little bit of a concern, but I think the big increase here for uh, Adrian Peterson's value is that he's going from uh, from quarterbacks like Kristen Ponder and and players like that that just aren't very good to Teddy Bridgewater who had really broke out as being one of the best rookies last year and showed that he does have some potential to potentially be a quality quarterback or even a star quarterback down the road. So that's always nice to see. We, we like the fact that the Vikings maybe won't face as many stacked boxes this year as they have in the past with Adrian Peterson and that could lead to some serious production out of AP. The big concern here, obviously, is that he did spend the year away from football, so he hasn't really had much time to mesh with the team. And, uh, you know, obviously he might be slightly out of football shape, but I'm not overly concerned about that. I'm still very happy to take him at number two overall. And, again, I don't really have a whole lot of concerns about his production. I think he's going to be great this year, and he's going to be right back to being one of those elite players that we talk about for fantasy football. And, finally, at number one, I have Le'Veon Bell. And I understand, guys, he's going to miss two games. And you're probably wondering, why didn't Tom Brady make my list at quarterback, whereas Le'Veon Bell did make my list at running back? So, I mean, that's a fair question. Although what I will say is that Tom Brady spent a full season last year and still didn't produce as a top 10 quarterback, and he's going to miss four games. Whereas Le'Veon Bell finished as the top scoring running back last year, and, and yeah, he's going to miss two games. But the reality is that he produced good enough numbers to make him still potentially the number one scoring running back this year, even if he misses two games. This guy's putting up crazy numbers, guys. I mean, we're talking over 2,200 total yards this past season. In a PPR format, he's even higher on my list because we could be talking about a guy who, again, catches 70 to 80 passes this year, and that's just crazy. So Le'Veon Bell is my number one overall player. Now, if, you're, if you haven't seen my video where I broke down why I have Le'Veon Bell ranked so high and, and what you can do to kind of supplement the fact that if he he's going to miss two games. But given the fact that he's going to miss two games, we want to also get some other players in there to supplement that. We're, we're going to need somebody to play for us. So I had some suggestions for you guys in that other video. I will leave a link to that in the description below, so be sure to look out for that. 
But also, guys, just, just keep in mind, you don't have to sit a running back. It's not like you're taking a zero at the position in weeks one and two when Le'Veon Bell's sitting out. You can still put in a player like a Chris Ivory or somebody like that who's going to produce decent enough numbers to at least potentially be a fantasy startable player. And then once Le'Veon Bell comes back, then you're talking about the guy who would unquestionably be the number one pick if he weren't getting suspended for those two games. So with that being said, guys, that is my top 10 list. I want to hear what you guys have to say about it. Do you have any questions? Are you guys in disagreement with me about anything? Let me know in the comments section below. Thank you so much for all the support. Hope you guys enjoyed this one. If you did, please be sure to hit the like button and help me out as well by pressing the subscribe button. That's how we really grow this channel, and uh, I would greatly appreciate it if you guys would subscribe to the channel. So thank you all again so much again for the support, and I'll talk to you next time here on the Fantasy Football Swagger Show.